Hey guys, Eric Roberts, welcome. This is Worship Band Builder, and today we're actually talking about how to mix for your live stream. How to mix and how to play, and really mainly how to play, how to do all the little tweaks that we did. And we just talked about this in the Worship Band Builder podcast. That's going to be episode 17. So whether this releases first or that releases first, anyway, Worship Band Builder podcast number 17 is going to be how to play and mix for live recordings. And we're really going to be focusing on the players of this. So what you can do to play, because you're going to be mixing, and I'm talking about some mixing for your live show or your live stream, basically. But then the players make a big difference, okay? What they're playing, how they're playing. So as a sound guy, as a producer, I've been going up to the band like, hey, can you play a little softer on this? Hey, can you, uh, you know, play a little louder on the drums? Hit your bass drum a little harder? Things like that, you know, that, that make a difference in the live stream. So first, why does, we talked about why the mix uh, on your live feed sounds terrible. And the problem is it's mixed for the live audience, through the speakers and you're listening through your computer and also it's not just the computer speaker some people might say well it's just the computer speakers no it's that the mix was for the room the mix had all the room in it, it had uh, the speakers were playing back to them in the room the bouncing everything was happening but in the live feed you're just getting kind of it kind of most likely if you're just taking your stereo feed off your board and plugging it into your live feed you're getting some sterile sounds you're getting some dry sounds your vocals are probably too loud, they sound harsh. So why the vocals sound, so but basically to fix that, you need to set it up to where you actually are mixing for the live feed. And I have my little drawing program here, and I wanna give you just a little overview of that uh, before we go on. So setting up for the live feed. So basically, let's say that you have your band here on stage, and I'm gonna to try to draw your band, and your worship leader, he's a pretty happy guy, and he's playing his guitar, and he's singing all that. Okay, you have your speakers, and your speakers are pumping this audio out that you're mixing to the people in the audience. So these are your people in the audience. Like, woo, yeah, it's great, sounds great. So your snake is going back here to a mixer, and this mixer is mixing all these channels for your live feed. So you're actually mixing for the live feed. Now what, what has to happen next is really, then you have your computer over here, where you are where people are listening so they're listening to you talk on your computer and you have some people are just taking their stereo out of their board and they're running it over here to the computer like dink dink that's it so whatever mix you're getting here you're also getting here does that make sense so that's that's how that would that would be the easiest way to go and i think that as we moved into our live stream that's how we did it and this is this i'm making this pre us doing that so we aren't set up quite ready for this setup that I'm gonna tell you about, but we're working towards it at our church right now, and I'm kinda of like trying to lead that charge to get a secondary line out of our mix board, okay? So basically, it would actually be like this, if you took all your mics and everything, and you went into a second board. This is another way like that you can do it. So now you have your second board mixing for the computer. So now you have two mixers, two sound mixers, a guy mixing for your live feed, and a guy mixing for your computer feed. So that's how that would go. Now we've gone a step further and there's actually a way that you can take with these digital consoles. If your church is in digital console mode, then you can actually take a Cat5 out of your digital console into a laptop, another laptop, and in that laptop you can mix the sound. So this is a laptop with uh, some, something like that I'm gonna use, Logic, Logic Pro then that is mixed by a sound guy who is mixing for the live feed. So you have a sound guy mixing, you have two sound guys. This is a little bit better setup and this is the setup that we're going for. Uh, but if you, if you don't have a lot of, uh, and this is actually, even I was gonna say if you don't have a lot of money, but really you have a computer, you just hook it up to your mixer. If you have a digital console, this is how this works. If you have a digital console like we have, you can actually do it just like this. So if you're not doing this much work, if you're not doing putting this much effort into your live mix, then all you're gonna hear is what you hear coming out of the speakers. It's gonna go out of a cable. It's gonna go basically the same signal you're sending out here. You're also sending it over here. And by the time it gets over here, it's all muddled up, it's dry, it's got issues, okay? It's got issues you can't fix just with that setup, just with a basic setup. It's got issues that you won't be able to fix. So let's uh, let's go on 
to this and talk about. So we're going to talk about that in other other episodes. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, starting a new uh, thing where you can actually do one-on-one -on -one consulting with me. So if you want to go, yeah, I need to I need to do this and I want to set this up. Um, just go to worshipbandbuilder.com and then click on coaching. Okay. So let's say. Uh, let's. I'm going to address now in this webinar. I'm going to address sort of like we did on the podcast, but a little in depth, and show you some of the equipment, some of the cool gadgets that I've got, and explain exactly what they're for. But first of all, like for vocals, my vocals sound terrible going to the live feed. Okay, so even if you've even if you've got all this set up, you still have some problems with your vocals. Number one, we had problems going to our live feed when we were doing mixing with the vocal popping. So they were getting on the microphone and it's like pop, 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 pop. So their, their vocals were popping, making that uh, plosive sound in the mic. So we've got these, um, basically what I found and what I've been using for our podcast is these little things and they're really, they're currently unavailable, but something like this where you can see that they have an actual handheld mic like you would use at church with a pop filter on it. And, it and there's a little thing here but you can put this on a music stand so or a mic stand I'm sorry you can put it on a mic stand and so this is an interesting little device eleven dollars and then they have different ones no those are that's the ones that we have right there so so that's basically uh, Rockville RTM desktop tripod mic I'm gonna try to put the links in the description to these things now we got rid of the pop the other thing that I that I think for vocals if your hand if you have a vocal on a mic stand is getting about three fingers or a fist away from the mic okay so let's say this is your microphone I, I don't I didn't grab a mic for this but this is your microphone and you're right up on it like this which is usually what you're doing it sounds pretty good in the system but then on live uh, the live feed it sounds muffly it sounds p -p poppy and it sounds weird like if I go like this p -p 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 -p, it sounds like that sound so what I do is I put a fist between my mouth and the mic so about I don't know three or four let's say, let's say four fingers so you're like this and you back yourself off a bit of the mic and if you can keep yourself right there the tone I've noticed as I've been playing with a bunch of mics over the last couple months for setting up different things uh, I've noticed that getting your your face off that mic sounds way better it can make a, a junky boomy mic sound clear okay and that's all due to the proximity effect which means the closer we get to the mic the boomier our voice gets so you can imagine if you if you use one of these on even a cheap mic that sounds kind of boomy it brings some clarity to the overall mix okay uh, so that's what you can do for your vocals the other thing uh, we talked about this a lot in the podcast so I'm gonna go down here and show you some of the gear we talked about uh, let's say the bass guitar sounds weak on the live recording so the fix is using a processor what we usually do is we've gone direct so these are the kind of things that we do we go direct so this is a direct box and a lot of people will just put this put this in there and they'll plug their bass right into it from their bass right to here and that's it and you send that to your mixing board and you can mess with that in a live scenario and it sounds pretty good so you can be like yeah our bass sounds pretty good but uh, I use a line 6 x3 live okay so I'll just show you this it's not uh, I don't even know if they sell these anymore but this is what I have and it's a guitar bass processor this is the old school bass pod pocket pod these kind of things like this that they have mine kind of looks like this but it's a line six just any kind of bass processor like this that you can use so the they can get expensive like this is a stomp modeler uh, but let me let me show you the one that I pulled up earlier to show you so this is four hundred forty nine dollars for the bass guitar or this is really the Mac Daddy guitar rig uh, one of them but this is just a basically you can plug this in it gives you some effects it gives you some compression you take this out into your direct box and then you put that into the mixer okay so basically if you put on here base uh, base uh, processor we can kind of look at some of these and I'll give you my my idea of this so these are not going to work just a single octave drive or a single whatever these kind of things you you need one that's actually it's like this one a zoom b3n base multi effects processor this is the kind of thing you need or even the one for a hundred dollars has a couple buttons on it you can EQ, you can compress. It basically amp models, so it kind of makes it sound like it's going through an amp, and you don't just get that dry sound. So that's my first thing with bass stuff. You spend $199 or $199 or something like that, and then you can do you can do that. So bass, uh, let's see, I said use a bass tube amp, preamp, something like this. That might be the wrong thing to type in here, actually. 
you know, so now we have these are base heads which are much more expensive so you just uh, if you want to do that that's not really what I meant uh, base tube processor so you can kind of type around and see what, that, what I'm telling you is you need to buy uh, like yeah basically a base multi multi effects processor eighty nine dollars this even though it's cheap would increase your base tone a hundred times from just plugging your base direct into a little direct box so you you've got your little direct box and you plug it in sounds like really flat and junky okay uh, let me tell you one other thing that you can do for making your live mix sound really good and I'll go back over here to this now say we have all of these things and then I'm gonna get to the other instruments we have all these things working out what I like to do is somewhere in the room I will put a big mic stand and I will put a big large diaphragm condenser mic on the mic stand pointing it that way and running it into the board okay now this is what I would call a room mic okay room mic this will you can mix this in to just the just either your in-ears or your computer feed you do not mix this into the main feed do not mix a room mic into the main feed you basically route it to where that it goes to your logic or it goes straight over into your auxiliary mix of this okay and so that is let me let me delete all this because it's getting kind of dirty uh, if you the other cheap way you can do this if you have a mixing board you have aux mixes across the top so you can send an aux mix which is which is really cheap no extra stuff over to your computer feed which is where your you know your Facebook live is so you can do that and if you do that you can send your room mic that's sitting back here and you get your room mic and it's pointed that way picking up the stage over here you can send that room mic into an aux channel like into aux channel 16 and route that to where it just goes over to here and maybe it goes into your in ears as well okay so in ears okay so that's that's the thing you want there so this is your room mic okay so that's another uh, tip for vocals too so this really will help your vocals to be able to hear the room mic now anytime during this webinar if you have any questions uh, while I'm drinking my coffee you can type in the little box there in the chat box and I will get your email and if you feel overwhelmed by this and think man I need that I need more help with this go ahead and go to worship the band builder.com worship band builder .com, and then click on coaching so we went through this one by one in the podcast like the exact stuff to do but what I want to do is I want to show you um, best budget vocal mics and because we're talking about vocals still live recording mic okay so we use these Audix OM5s they're pretty good I've not used a lot of these microphones I just pulled this up sure SM48 it's an okay microphone you can look at all I wanted to show you more types so these are handheld stage mics okay so these sound pretty good okay they sound pretty good these are more like uh, studio mics, these large diaphragm condensers. You can't use these on stage because they'll pick up the whole thing. This would be more of the mic you would use for that room mic, like I told you, or the Rode NT1A. Inexpensive, you could put that a couple of those on your room. You could put one on the left and one on the right side midway back or right at the top by your sound booth and just turn them on. They pick up everything. If you've got change in your pocket and you're standing near one, it'll pick up the jingle of the ch That's what these are. So these microphones here, which I'll do a whole other uh, podcast on this, these microphones reject sound from the sides. They just pick up your voice, and so that's why they're great for stage. If you put one of these microphones in one of these little things right here, they sound so good, like they're way better. I know it looks a little bit goofy, and you have to have it stationary, but you're doing this for the mix. You're, you're saying, if I put this on here, it's going to sound like 10 times better in the mix. Okay, so cheap mic, cheap little Audix ASO, and you got it there. The best mic that basically the Shure SM58. While I'm talking about mics, I will make a whole podcast about that. But th these mics are 100 bucks a piece. You cannot go wrong with these mics. If if you're looking for cheap mics, these are the mics. They're not they they're inexpensive. You can buy cheap like twenty dollar mics on Amazon. They're okay, but I would I would at least go with this. Um, and then you can uh, one of the girls at our church has a Beta SM58. I believe she has a Beta 8. A little bit more expensive. A little bit nicer. I like it, okay? Uh, Emily, Beta 57A, I believe, is what she has. A little, again, a little nicer. Oh, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's a Beta 87A, sorry. Beta 87A, even a little nicer, but 
mm, that's a good sounding mic, especially on a, a female, a lyric voice. Um, really uh, doesn't do great on my baritone voice, but man, it's it's got some clarity to it. Um, I like, my mic is a Heil PR35, I believe, or P35. One of the best mics ever, especially for like a, a, a guy's voice. And a P35, there it is. Oh, that's beautiful. I love this microphone, PR35. Now this mic's a couple hundred, two and three hundred bucks. So yeah, for a couple three hundred bucks, you can get yourself a really good, really good stage mic. And then you can uh, work on using it. A lot of them are supposed to have pop filters, but they don't always do that. So like in the podcast, we talked about the acoustic guitar. So some of the things like don't play so hard, don't do all that, that's all very, very important. Again, you can do acoustic, guitar, if you wanted to get fancy, multi, effects, see if it'll show me something. You could get some kind of simple, soulmate acoustic, but this thing right here has got delay, reverb, EQ, a tuner, oh my goodness. I've never used this, but this is the kind of thing that you wanna lay on the floor. Plug your guitar into this first, then to the board. If you go just straight direct out of your acoustic, into the board, it sounds flat, and that's what we're trying to get rid of, okay? The flatness. Uh, let's see, when I said play the drums, play with dynamics, we got the bass, the keyboard we talked about, going uh, with the keyboard. What I like to do with the, key the keyboards is um, just don't change the volume all over, so I did talk about some of that in the podcast. Okay, electric guitar, okay, electric guitar. Electric guitar, and I have, um, videos on my pedal board. Now, I I built a pedal board for around 700-ish dollars. It wasn't super cheap, but it was no nowhere near uh, expensive. So if you go online and you type in like worship guitar, pedal boards, I mean, you're gonna get all of these guys, worship pedal board under 300 bucks, 18 best worship guitar pedals. You know, there's tons of resources, but I'll, I'll tell you, you just need, um, you just need a little bit of, if you're going through an amp, you can go through an amp. So I'll, I'll show you the two different ways you can set that up overview, but realize I have this on my website. I have my whole pedal board on my YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and delete all that. And I'll show you the two different setups for an electric guitar. These are very, very important, like extremely important. The first setup is old school, take a guitar, plug it into an amp, and there you have it. So we'll call this basically one uh, step one. Okay, this is this is you. You're pretty happy. You're like, yeah, I like it. Okay, and I'm try try it all the guitar here. So you got your guitar and you're trying to play it. It sounds pretty good. And you can have distortion, clean or distorted, clean or distorted. You probably have two channels, and you might have two channels, and you have one little foot pedal switch back and forth. Now this is okay, um, and that was not supposed to be an XX. It was like that was like part of the speaker. This is okay, but then let's go to setup number two. So you want to get a little more fancy. So you take your amp and uh, you have your amp here. And in this scenario, you would actually mic your amp. So you would put a little mic on your amp and that's how you would do that. So this is a mic, your amp. Same thing here. You would mic your amp, you put a little mic on it, just like that, you know. And you would go from your amp to a pedal board. Now your pedal board is gonna have all these pedals on it, okay? These different pedals. And that is number two. This is what I use in my uh, worship thing, guitar pedal board. Okay, and then you use a mic going back to your soundboard. Perfect to do. Uh, I can go through all the pedals you have, but really you just need an overdrive. So you need like a drive pedal, which makes it crunchy. Um, you need, I think, a verb pedal. And you know, those two things alone could get you really far because you'd have clean, you'd have driven, you'd have verb. Um, I have some other pedals on my board, so make sure you go to my pedal board and check it out because it's amazing. Um, I have some expressions, some different things. But the, the other way you could do this, and a lot of guys are doing this now, is the amp is no longer there, okay? So because we're all in in-ears, let's say the amp is gone, you buy a multi-effects pedal, it's got a little computer in it, it's got everything in it, and then you're down here with your guitar and you're like, ooh, yummy, I can make all these sounds, and you send them right past the amp, there's no amp there, to the soundboard and it's called direct and this is an effects pedal okay so this is just an effects a multi-effects now i'm going to show you on my screen here now 
how uh, what, what multi effects pedals that we have. So the guitar center, uh, let's see, multi guitar multi effects pedal. I have the Line 6 Pod X3 Live. I think it was $500 when it came out. Now they're really moving this up, okay? Some of these, like the Helix is the big one. Look at the $1699, okay? So the, but this is every pedal in the world in, that you could think of inside inside your pedal, inside your, inside your computer. I mean, it, it, this thing is very powerful. Let's look here, we've got, this is the Big Sky, this is a, but the problem is, this big sky, and so like a lot of worship guys have this, it's like $500 for one pedal. And yeah, it might sound amazing, but that's just one pedal. That's one, one pedal. It does some stuff, you know, but it's just one pedal, right? So if you were to say, well, I'm going to spend $1,600 or $900 or, or $1,200, I'm going to get one of these multi-effects pedals. They have everything in it, you know, all of it. So it is quite a bit cheaper, really, in the end, if you were to buy a multi-effects. Um, and we can talk about that later. But the idea is you don't just want to plug your guitar into your amp. Just do that one basic thing where you just have one amp and a guitar. It's okay. But for worship and the sounds you want now, you want to at least have a pedal board with some reverb. Or you want to go to a multi-effects processor unit so you can actually sound good. Okay, so those are some of the things that, that you're going to have to spend. My whole rig with my amp and my pedal board probably because I bought everything used and I bought it all through either Reverb or eBay and I would just look for deals. So I would get a $300 pedal for like 190, you know, or 180. I think I spent seven-ish hundred on my pedal board. I built the actual pedal board myself and then I spent a few hundred dollars on the amp, uh, actually $80 on the $300 amp. So, you know, you just, you just go look used and that's what I do. I feel like I'm just a bargain shopper when it comes to stuff because I like to buy a lot of gear. But I hate it when I buy it brand new and I'm like, that's okay. So I like to buy it used, sell it, buy it, try it, sell it, buy it, try it, sell it, and do that. So that's that's my game. That's what I do. So we've done through all of that. Listen, we have more resources on our website. Remember, in this webinar, you can click and ask me any questions. This was an overview of like a lot of the gear that we're doing. Um, one last thing I'll say for your drums. I will do one more if we if we do a drum. So if you have live drums, and I'll do all of these if you want me to. I'll do all of these very specific webinars for each instrument, talking about how I set them up and everything like that. Drum shield. Now, th this is important in drum mics. If you're not miking every single drum or have a couple overheads like this guy right here, then your live feed's not going to sound great. You're not going to hear your drums. These overhead microphones on this drum set right here. Uh, are very important. Okay, you can see those overheads. And uh, the drum shields are very important. Oh, they got those drum shield hinges. Really nice. We actually need some of those, actually. But they, they're $300. Okay. <laughs> now I'm just shopping with you here. Uh, any of these shields, uh, they're expensive, but they're, they're key. Because it's going to be really hard to get a good sound. You have all kinds of bleed, what we call mic bleed. So your drums are going to be coming through your vocal mics. So when you get to the mix, uh, you get to the live thing, you got all this drum noise coming through all the mics on the stage. So you have to start thinking about your live feed. How are your instrument? How are your musicians playing? How are they playing? And how are you? Uh, how are you uh, doing all this stuff? So I just, uh, I just want you to think about all of that. How are you playing? And I was reading. Sorry, I was reading a comment there. How, how, are, how are your musicians playing? Are they playing the right thing? Are they playing soft? Are they you know, doing stuff like we talked about in our podcast in, in great detail? Or are they just all up there just banging on their guitars and just playing as loud as they can? And then you're thinking you're trying to mix for a live feed. So you, you have to start thinking about, I'm mixing for a live feed. I'm specifically working on something important. And all of these pieces have to go together. So the resources we have are worshipbandbuilder.com slash Wednesday webinar. So any of our webinars, you can go right here to webinars and you can go down here and you can do playbacks of the webinars. This one will be on here as well after it, after it debuts. Uh, and then you can also get one-on-one -on -one coaching for your team. So if you go on here, I'm adding this, uh, this bar here soon. It'll just be in here. It's either in resources or it'll be up top uh, coaching. So if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, have me look at your stuff, do a Zoom meet. We do that as well. And then foundation sessions for audio and every instrument for your whole team. So get those musicians learning and playing well and doing well and doing good. And then your mix is going to be a lot easier. And I love the audio part of this. So you can, you can hear that. I will try to as well put some links in our podcast 
to our church, uh, which is, in, and you can actually go to Facebook and stream. You can go to Facebook and go to um, the church at Spring Hill, and I'll put a link in that description because I'm, I was mixing their live feed straight through the mixer, straight to the to the thing when we first started doing this. And um, so, guys, God bless. Let me know if you have any questions. Put down in the comments. I'd love to really talk to you and get more involved in talking to you about what's happening as you're trying to take what's on stage, run it through the speakers, and then run it to the live feed. God bless you guys. I'll see you on the flip side.